Libya's neighbor has reignited an old debate. I'm talking about Egypt. Their government has decided to ban the face veil in schools. Now, the face veil is called the niqab. It's different from the hijab. The hijab is a hair covering. The niqab covers the entire face. Egypt says the hijab is optional, meaning students can cover their hair or not, as they wish. It is their choice as long as the guardian permits it. But the niqab is a strict no. Students cannot wear the face veil to school. The order came from Egypt's education ministry. It will be imposed in the upcoming academic year. As expected, it has triggered a debate. One side says, why should anyone tell women or girls what to wear, let alone the state? The other side says, good riddance. Things like a face veil have no place in a modern society. So which side is right? Before we tackle that question, some facts first. Most women in Egypt do wear the hijab. They cover their hair in public, but the niqab is less common. Only a tiny minority prefer to cover their face as well. But let's be clear, both these customs are rooted in patriarchy. It's about telling women what to wear. With that said, back to our controversial question, which side is right? Honestly, bans have never solved a problem, any problem. In fact, they make things worse. You tell someone they can't do something, their first reaction is this, why not? A better option is to empower people, give them knowledge and information, let them make the right choice. For example, do you know how the idea of the hijab originated? The Quran does not talk about it. It simply asks women and men to dress modestly. Yet who does it apply to? Just women. Scholars have hijacked this concept of veils. For them, maximum veil equals maximum faith and piety. As I said, that's not the case. We need to teach our children that. Maybe then they will abandon the veil themselves. But who will do that? Just look at countries like Iran. If you do not wear a hijab in Iran, you can be punished or worse. That's what happened to 22-year-old Masha Amini, she was tortured and killed by Iran's morality police. Her death anniversary is on Saturday. But one year later, what has changed? Iran's morality police are back on the streets. Women still have to wear the hijab in this country. So did education help her? Did education help Masha Amini? She was studying to become a lawyer. Maybe that made her question Iran's hijab law. But in the end, she paid the price for her opinion. My point is, education alone will not be enough. If you live in countries like Iran, you could be punished for your dissent, for your choice. So we need to strike a balance. Muslim leaders in the West call the hijab a choice, a symbol of their identity. But is it not a tone-deaf symbol? Women in Iran put their life on the line to protest the hijab, but elsewhere, it's being reclaimed. It's being worn like a badge of honor. What message does this send to girls like Masha Amini? And I know that context matters. The context in Iran and the West is very different. But so do facts. Facts matter too. And the fact is that the hijab is rooted in patriarchy. There should be agreement on that. In the West, in India, in Iran, in Egypt, once you agree on that, you can figure out the next step. Do you ban it or do you phase it out? And that's where governments are so important. In Egypt, the government says the ban is about tackling extremism. In France, the argument is totally different. In 2004, they banned the headscarves. They banned headscarves in school, in France. In 2010, they banned face veils in public. And this year, they banned the abaya in schools. The French say it's about secularism. Religion has no place in public institutions like schools. So by extension, neither do religious symbols. Now, there is some logic there. But here's what the other side says. If you ban the hijab or niqab, parents will take their children out of school. So in the end, it's the girls who suffer, one way or the other. It's always the girls who suffer. There is logic here too. I'm afraid there's no simple answer to this issue. Every country has its own method. But what we can do is lay some ground rules. For instance, accept that the hijab is a patriarchal vestige. You may think it's a cultural symbol. You may even think it's a choice but don't deny the roots. Secondly, it's always about extremism. It's not always about extremism. Islamic State terrorists used to roam around in Western shirts and sneakers, yet women's veil is the problem. 
So let's be clear about intentions too. You cannot use the veil as a political tool, ban it when you want to be progressive and impose it when you want to be conservative. That's not how it works. We need consistent policy on hijabs and niqab, but for that, you need a debate based on merit and facts, not identity politics and false victimhood.